Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the second in our series of conversations with her company on our new Her Dreamers program, talking about her dream, her journey, and her company. We are so excited today because uh, first and foremost, we have our fearless leader, Nancy, back with us today. And I know she uh, sends her regrets from the scene, um, but we had such a great conversation the other day with Blanca. Yeah. And then today, we are just beyond excited to have Terry Hall. And I know personally, this has just been so exciting for me because Terry was a part of one of my, I think, second or third careers because, you know, we've all had a bunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> And so getting to rekindle a wonderful connection with this amazing lady. So let me just take a couple of minutes to introduce you to um, our two phenomenal speakers today. First, I'll start with Nancy, and hopefully most of you know her. But if not, let me just say I, number one, have just been so blessed and so fortunate to have known this woman for a good portion of my career. And again, through about, I think I'm on my fifth now, <laughs> that she has known me through Nancy is um, the founder of her company. She is the president of the Women's Business Development Center of Florida. Um, many of you may know her through her work with WeBank and certification, but Nancy also has a phenomenal passion for helping women go after their dreams and build a bridge of going from employee to entrepreneur. And so getting to this point where we are actually rolling out a program focused on that is just, I think, one of those moments that uh, is really helping her um, get to the ends of her dreams and one of the things that she's been so passionate about. And so Nancy's going to be uh, interviewing our phenomenal Terry Hall today. And again, I am just so fortunate because I have had the pleasure of knowing Terry's name. She probably doesn't know this. Even back when I was in Spire Diversity at Walmart and first working with Whip and Nabo, I knew about the infamous Terry Hall, <laughs> and then I got to have a chance to work with her through my time at WEP, but since then, it is just amazing because Terry has taken all of her knowledge and her experience, and there's going to be sort of, I think, two elements of our conversation today. One of the biggest things about this idea of this journey that you may take to cross your bridge from your dream of employed entrepreneur is really understanding what that catalyst moment might be that gets you there. And everybody has a different one. The second is then looking at the knowledge base you have had for those years of being an employee and how you take that and turn that intellectual capital into a business. And Terry has done exactly that. Um, with 20 years experience in advertising and communication. And again, I always like to say that's because we all were toddlers when we started working, right, ladies? Um, at least that's what my mother likes to tell people. I was connecting to the moment I could talk. <laughs> um, her current clients focus on tourism, retail, attractions, restaurants, you name it. She has this phenomenal business called Double Take Studios. They are based in Tampa. And um, so we are just so excited to have her share not only her story of how she got to her business, but also how she is using all of her knowledge base to grow. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to hand it over to these phenomenal ladies and um, just get ready for a really great session. So Nancy, I am handing it over to you. Thank you. And thank you for that lovely introduction. I, wow. I, I have watched you grow and flourish and um, actually go from employee to entrepreneur yourself. So I'm so happy that you're uh, helping us um, with this, this journey and building this, this bridge, helping uh, women build this bridge. And I am absolutely thrilled to interview Terry. Terry and I have known each other for many years, I think about 15 years now. It's been a- It is, I was thinking about that today. Yeah. yeah a, a long, long time. And um, Terry is a friend. She is an entrepreneur, and Terry is one of my board members at the council at the WBDC Florida. So she serves as our ambassador, and she is a really, really great example of, as Stephanie said, how you can take your experience and actually use that to grow um, a a phenomenal business, right? And um, over the course of this interview, we will talk to Terry about how she's pivoted her business at some critical points. We'll talk about her employees. I mean, we're just going to give you lots of really, really great insight and hopefully um, inspiration and motivation for, for you to take the plunge. 
And I have a set of questions, so I'll, I'll be asking Terry these questions, and then we hope to get some questions from the audience as well. So we'll leave about 15 minutes towards the end of, of this uh, program for, for your questions. Don't be shy. If you have a question, I'm sure you know somebody else has the question too. So we will address those. Um, so Terry, welcome. And uh, thank you for, for being a part of this, this interview series. And I'll start off by asking you, how long have you been an entrepreneur? I think probably since I was a kid. I can remember making my cousins weave pot holders and I would run out and sell them as fast as possible, only to find out that I was getting enough money just to buy another bag of loops. So I learned really fast how much I, how you had to add some money to that to make some profits. You know? uh -huh. So seriously, the neighborhood, uh, they used to, anytime I knocked on the door, they would be, what are you selling now? You know. So I think it started as a child, really. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and did you have role models for that or, or did you just decide on, on, your, on your own that this was the way you wanted to make some extra money? Um, I think I did have a role model. My grandfather, my grandparents had their own business and they were always successful with that. They babysat me a lot while my mom worked and my dad worked. And so I got to go with them. <laughs> this is going to be really bizarre. They owned a burial vault business. So I had been to well over a hundred funerals before I was six years old because I went with them to the funerals to service the funerals. But anyway, they worked really hard. And I, you know, even at five and six, I had to help them with whatever I could do. I always thought it was a lot of work, but it probably was not very much work at all. But yeah, I think I got a good example from that because they did very well with that business and retired early and were able to enjoy the fruits of their labor. So I did see that and they were inspiring for me for that. Beautiful. And, and uh, tell, tell us about why you decided to go from employee to entrepreneur. So yeah, a little bit about what you were doing and what, as, as Stephanie said, what was the actual catalyst that, that got you to, to go from employee to, to entrepreneur? entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, there were a couple of things that happened. One was I had worked at one ad, ad agency it started having financial difficulties. So that led me to a larger ad agency. Then it started having financial difficulties. Um, I can remember racing to the bank with other employees the minute we got our checks and the employee before me was able to cash his and I wasn't able to cash mine. And after that, one of our accounts, which is the one I was going to talk about, um, hired me away from the agency to be their internal marketing and PR person. And so that's what started that. And then that business working with them for a while is what really put me over the edge to definitely work for myself. Mm -hmm. so, and and t tell, it, tell us that story because it's a very interesting story. Well, um, that boss that I, we had, it was an electronics distributor. And now at the time, I really knew nothing about F connectors and AB switches and things like that. So it was, it was kind of a learning curve, but I was hired to you know, produce their catalog uh, do their trade shows, attend trade shows, put together events, um, press releases, you name it. I was kind of like the one man shop within. And um, one of my responsibilities was doing the overflow sales. So he had a team of six salesmen that they sold all over the country, actually um, internationally too. But all the sales were done via telephone. So my job was to handle any overflow sales calls. So whenever the other six salesmen were busy or occupied, I was to take the next sales call. So as a result of that, um, I would attend the trade shows. Anyway, I developed some a customer base, and every month he would post the sales on the wall for everyone to see what the sales were. And um, at that time, uh, even though I was part-time sales and doing all those other responsibilities, three months in a row I was matching or exceeding the top salesman, who his only responsibility was to cultivate business on the telephone. So after three months of that, <laughs> I went to the boss and asked him and I told him, I said, look, as you've seen, we've been posting these sales on the wall and I have met or exceeded the, uh, the top salesman. And I really feel that I'm doing all these responsibilities and I deserve a raise. And he said, you know, Terry, you're absolutely right. You definitely deserve a raise. Uh, what kind of a raise were you thinking about? Well, unbeknownst to him, that salesman had bragged to me about what he was getting paid. <laughs> so I found out, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but let's say he was getting 600 a week. And at that point I was getting 250 a week for what I was doing. Wow. It was a huge difference. 
And I said, well, I want to get paid what he's getting paid. You know, I found out he's getting paid this and the 600. So I would like the 600 a week. And I feel that I've earned it. And he goes, wow, that's, you know, he says the first thing out of his mouth was, well, so-and-so has a wife and child to support and you don't, you don't need that. You know, and I was just stunned. I mean, the first thing out of my mouth was, I, that has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. I mean, I, I don't know why I just said that. And he said, okay, I'll tell you what, um, we'll let the company vote on that. And, um, you know, if the company decides you get that raise, then, then you can have it. And I said, well, how on earth am I going to do that? And he says, well, you figure it out. And I thought, wow. So I kind of go back to my little cubicle there with my little drafting table. And I'm kind of sitting back there just seething. I, I really was getting madder by the minute. And I thought, well, I'm in my mid twenties. I don't have a whole lot to lose really, you know? So if he fires me, he fires me. Right. So uh, I guess because I was pretty hot headed, I got on the intercom and told everyone to, that Daryl has called an emergency meeting to the front of the room. Please come to the front of the room. Um, and, and, you know, so everyone dropped what they were doing. They came up at the front and they were kind of all standing there. And I thought I'm going to position myself to the point where it's going to be hard for them to say no. So I just said, uh, everyone, uh, the boss is called. I've, I've met with him and asked him for a raise and he tells me it's up to you. So if anyone here has a problem with me getting a raise, please raise your hand right now. And they're looking at each other and, you know, and, and he came out of the, his office and was kind of standing there in the doorway and he goes, and he actually gave me the raise. Wow. So I got the raise. He couldn't believe I did that. I couldn't believe that he still kept me, <laughs> but um, I continued to work for him and um, he decided to diversify his business and get into real estate, which he really wasn't an expert at and was taking money from the business into that. And the business starting having having financial problems, and I thought, okay, this is the third one in a row that's starting to have serious cash flow problems. I can trust myself better than I can someone else. So um, I decided um, at the time. By the time I left there, he had all the employees. It was down to him, his wife, me, and one other employee. And he it, at this point was in arrears to me, and so he started letting me have equipment, you know, so that I could start myself. And from, uh, as a result of going to trade shows and things, I had cultivated some people that also wanted what we did. Um, so I was able to start my business that way. And actually over time, it took him about a year, but he did actually pay me what he had owed me, which was pretty honorable because I didn't really expect that, but he did enable me to start the business. And that's really kind of how I started. So it was kind of specialized in electronics and then branched out from there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, great. And, and, and the, the impetus was, uh, financial uh, hardship in previous companies. And I loved what you said about just knowing that you could do this for yourself, right? And also that you used your prior experience. I bet you, you were the one who kind of negotiated, well, let me have some of the equipment. I'll take some of the equipment, you know, to start um, my own business. So, so those are really good, good lessons for, for people. Right. He, I mean, he had some bulk mailing equipment and had me doing a lot of mailings and preparation for that. And I realized I could use that with this business. Mm -hmm. um, so that some computers, uh, things like that, that enabled me to get started. Cause that was in 19, I even hate to say how long, 1986, 87 mm -hmm. is when that was. So, I mean, he was amenable to it. You know, I mean, I think he felt badly. Uh, I did too at the same time, but I was pretty excited to get out there and do something on my own because I thought, okay, then I have no one to blame but myself. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what really was the catalyst that really got it started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, what, how would you describe the, the type of business you have now? What, what would you say is your business model? Um, as far as what we do for other people or, or yeah. businesses, um, we've actually been in a little bit of a transition phase. I know the business name is Double Take Studios and we did a DBA and we are in the process of changing it to Double Take Marketing and PR because in the beginning we were more graphics centric, which we still do, but mm -hmm. we found that some of our clients want some other marketing services along with that. And what we have done is we have changed with the times and added, um, public relations to that and added people that have that area of expertise to be able to complement that. And I believe a lot of that has kind of stemmed from doing a lot of social media and social media kind of being a bridge between traditional PR and, and things that they sort of mesh together. 
So mm -hmm. we want to be able to offer those services to our clients and have a well, more well-rounded plan or strategy for them when we work with them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of where we have um, morphed the business over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, a, that's a great answer because part of uh, what entrepreneurs need to be able to do to, to maintain their success and their level of growth is to kind of pivot, right? So um, in the industry, sometimes we talk about failing fast, right? You try something and it's not quite giving you the result that you want rather than continue to pour money into something that's not really getting you what you want. The, the idea is you fail fast. You try it for six months, for a year, and then you realize, okay, the lessons I learned in this venture are A, B, C, D, whatever, and I'm going to apply those to my next um, idea or, you know, going after my next market. Um, so I'm assuming that over the years you have had that happen to you, right? Um, right. where you've tried something and it didn't quite work and you, you kind of pivoted to, to someplace else. So do you have any like examples that you could give of, um, when and, and how that happened? Well, early on, I would say, um, for a while there, we were doing a lot of print brokering, which I still love the printing industry. Um, I, something about printing on paper. I don't know. I'm, I must be on that, that era where it's kind of going from paper to electronics, but Early on, I want to say probably 15 years ago, um, we had a large format printer and we could do a lot of large format type stuff, but I really realized that that really wasn't our forte. It ended up sapping a lot of energy, spent a lot of time trying to troubleshoot that, and I really needed to decide where we were going to go. We were better outsourcing to someone that had more um, flexibility with their equipment. Um, I can remember one gigantic poster or something that we had to print and it just it at the time that printer took um, um, a, an inch a minute and the things like 10 feet long and it would somehow the last foot and a half would stop and then the, the things ruined and we did that over and over and over a whole weekend several times to try to, to over override that system and I realized that's really not, that wasn't a good use of our time and our expertise and use someone else to do that. And since that, you know, the, at that time that, that printer was maybe 35 or $40,000. And now you can get something so much better for probably five or six. Mm -hmm. And um, just with the change of equipment and things like that, um, I found we're better off using our creative talents and getting paid for that and for concepting and campaigns and creation than actually the the actual um, deliverables as far as um, tangible. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be one that I think uh, really ate up a lot of time and finally I just let it go. I wheeled it out back and put it by the dumpster and just said, I, I have to just let this thing go. <laughs> yeah, and, and sometimes as entrepreneurs, you have to kind of make those tough decisions, right? So you, you take a step back to, you know, take a leap forward. Um, so, Getting back to your your transition from employee to, to entrepreneur, uh, how did you use your experience from you know being an employee to land your your first contracts and your your bring in some some clients when you opened your doors? Um, well. At first, some of them really came to me because they knew I um, was in that industry. So they knew I knew the industry, even though they might have manufactured a different item. So mm -hmm. that allowed me to have uh, clients in other cities or other states right away. Mm -hmm. um, so that I was able to sort of parlay that. But I really loved like attractions and, you know, everybody loves the high profile accounts that are fun. You know, it's a lot more fun to market, market elephants and llamas and things like that than it is, you know, F connectors and AB switches. So, um, so, <laughs> so I really kind of set my sights on going after some of the tourism type accounts and, um, over time was able to do that, convince them to, to utilize us. You know, we started having little, you know, I, I don't know if it was starting to do things for some nonprofits and donating some items. I mean, there, there were a lot of different things I tried to get in the doors to different businesses to know people because it is really about relationship building and um, you know anything I was I, I uh, I'm trying to redevelop that hunger I had then right now <laughs> because it's kind of fun to a fun challenge to go after a new business 
Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's really what, what I did was, you know, try, tried to set my sights on some accounts that I thought would really be a lot of fun to get. And really, um, those, those take a long time to get. They really did. The sales cycle was longer. You know, it took a long time to build a relationship. Mm-hmm. So, um, and a lot of times it was more like, um, let us just try one job and you see how we work and give us a shot at it. And that's a lot of times how we were able to get some mm-hmm. land some business that way early on. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I want to highlight a couple of things that, that you said, because, um, you know, th- these are really important points for people to consider as they're making that transition, right? So you said that, that some of your first clients came to you, right? And they came to you because you had contact with them in, in your past uh, careers, right? Or your, right. your past jobs. And you had provided them with, you know, some kind of excellent service or idea or something that you did that sets you apart from from someone else. And um, I think that's really key to remember is that a lot of times with new entrepreneurs, how they land their very first clients is really by looking back at where they were. And can you go back to those people and say, you know, I've left where I was and now I, I'm on my own and I'm doing the same thing and I would love a chance to, you know, continue to impress you. Um, and sometimes it's just as simple as, you know, going on Facebook and saying, this is what I'm doing or going on LinkedIn and saying, this is what I'm doing and people will contact you. And um, the other thing you, you mentioned is, you know, the follow up that you did, right, which is right. really important. Um, and the, the third thing that I think, you know, we should really highlight is what you said about building relationships. And that is really key. I think, you know, every time I'm out speaking, every time I'm, I'm uh, working one-on-one with someone, I always remind them that people do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. And you can get people to know you, to like you, and to trust you in a variety of different ways. You mentioned um, just asking people to give you a chance. That's a great way to do it. Doing some free work um, to showcase your talents. That's another way to get people to know you, to trust you. And the more authentic you are, the more more that they're going to like you. So um, great stuff. Lots of great insight there, Terry. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so... Um, let's talk about, um, your, your employees. I, I happen to, to know, um, a little bit about, you know, how you got your first employees and, and who has been around with you for, for a very long time. But why don't you go ahead and tell us that, that story? Uh, well, I've had, you know, it's funny because some in, in this business in particular, um, like I have another friend, uh, that has a design firm in Chicago and we were talking about bankers and things like that in the past. Uh, if you stayed in this industry two to three years at one agency, that was considered long term, you know, even back in the day when people were staying 10 and 15 years someplace. In this business, people transition or change agencies or firms uh, pretty, pretty often. You know, they don't usually stay. I mean, there are people that are exceptions to the rule. And actually, Jeff, that I have at my office now is one of those exceptions to the rule. Um, Um, I was fortunate that he had a bad experience (laughs) with the agency he was with before me. So uh, when he came to us, um, we probably were a lot more um, desirable. So um, he started working with us at the end of 2000. So he's been with us for, this is his 18th year, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and a lot of the things that we've gotten, a lot of design awards and awards for creativity that are, you know, at the national district, even and, and local level too, um, and international level. And a lot of those are a result of Jeff's work and collaborating. I find that our best stuff is usually when we all work as a team. It's not always just me or just him. Our better stuff is usually when we've worked together. Um, and so it's been really, really great. Um, it's kind of interesting that when he started working at double take, his children were one and three and now both of them are in college. So that's pretty amazing (laughs) for anyone to stay there that long, you know, it, it, you know, I, um, as you know, work with a lot of of entrepreneurs and sometimes uh, entrepreneurs forget to just stop and take stock at, you know, the, the, the phenomenon of helping other people. Right. So through you and your business, Jeff has been able to put food on his table 
and take care of his kids for, for 18 years. That's phenomenal. And I know you probably, uh, you know, are shy to share this, but I'll share it on, on, on your behalf. <laughs> there were times, I know you've told me, that um, Jeff made more money than you did because oh, yeah. you the benefit <laughs> of keeping him on board. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. I do think um, there are certain key employees that are so valuable, you don't want to lose them, you know, and because they are what helps your business prosper. I mean, they really are an investment in your business. So, you know, you want to protect your investment as best as possible. Beautiful. <laughs> the Beautiful. best way possible, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm going to um, uh, ask you to talk about uh, WeBank certification as an investment in your business because there might be some people out there listening who are, you know, obviously currently employees and thinking of, of becoming entrepreneurs. And, you know, there are organizations that are in existence to help women entrepreneurs. And I know, you know, you've been affiliated to WeBank, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council and certified as a woman-owned company for, for a, a good many years. So uh, tell us about how you decided to, to take advantage of that as a marketing tool. Well, um, at first when I was in WeBank, it was a little overwhelming. I actually had a client who was going to the WeBank conference in Chicago, you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, and she was doing a little special brochure to promote her business for that. And she said to me, she said, well, you ought to get in this, you know, I mean, uh, that was Nikki, uh, Beavers. Remember back in the day, I do. Um, I do. So we were doing a project for her and, um, she said, you should get involved in this. And I said, well, what is it? And she explained what it was. And that's really how I even had heard of it. I'd never heard of it before. Um, so then, um, I looked into doing that. And then, um, I guess after the site visit, um, I think it was Darlene had mentioned you or you had needed some work and I started getting involved with you. Um, and that really is what helped the most, I think, is getting involved with your RPO, by the way, because, um, we were doing something at Disney and you needed some custom awards and we had done some logo work and started there, um, a long time ago. And that's really Again, it's, it's like getting to know people. Um, the very first conference I went to at WeBank National, which now it's massive, it was big then too, but it was a little overwhelming because you didn't really quite know where to start. Uh, but after you got involved and started meeting people and getting to know people, it's almost like, I don't want to say it's like a sorority, but it is like a group of other women entrepreneurs that you can become friends with and that help you. And maybe their businesses have nothing to do with yours, but sometimes the problems are still the same. And um, it's nice to be able to share that, have the camaraderie. And really, as a result of my WeBank certification, I have, have counted 26 new uh, clients over that time period that are strictly through WeBank, that I've met through WeBank that I would not have met if it had not been for we, WeBank. I wouldn't know those businesses existed. So it's been beneficial to me, but I have invested in it as well. When we've had host, host committee opportunities, that was a substantial investment for a company my size but it paid back enormous dividends, I would say, um, mm -hmm. and getting involved. Um, it's no different than any other thing that you really put your heart into it. And if you really um, uh, immerse yourself in it and get to know, get to know the people in, in the group, um, you can do nothing but benefit because you're building relationships again. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And, and the, I, I, I like how you, you brought up the fact that, um, through your affiliation to WeBank, you were able to get some clients. And that oh, also is, is an important thing for uh, new entrepreneurs to remember is that you um, can't always just go at it alone, right? You need the support. You need um, the mentoring. You need uh, the sharing of I ideas. And um, along the way, because you're building relationship and trust, these women have asked you to help them with everything from websites to booth design to consulting and, you know, all these great things and opportunities you've had. Um, and, and you've made a really big difference in, in their own companies. I mean, I remember with Mercedes, um, she had come to you because she'd lost a contract because her website was kind of old fashioned and you went in and, you know, revamped her website. And as a result of that, she landed some major contracts, right? And mm -hmm. you and Mercedes had met through the WeBank network. Mm 
Right. She was in Miami and I mean, here I was in Tampa and I would not have known of her business uh, had it not been for being on that host committee. Mm -hmm. Um, So got to know her a little bit more then. And uh, yeah, that was an interesting thing because she, she was very, very um, entrenched in the WeBank. You know, she was on the in the Zenith group. She had really high revenues. She had a large business and really that whole, um, project with her was a result of she just hadn't had her her um her brand kind of grow with her she just you know the website didn't seem important at that time of course we're talking we're also talking more than 15 years ago i think the importance of websites has become more more paramount these days and people are more cognizant of how important a website is to their business but at that time her website made her company look small so when it was a company like ups putting out this contract you know, they used someone um, that was uh, maybe a more of an entry level employee do the initial research. And when they looked at her website, they didn't think her company was large enough to handle this contract when in reality she was. So luckily she knew people higher up in UPS who had said something like, you know, why didn't you go after this contract? And she said, well, we did. And then they researched it and found out that she didn't make the cut because when they did their initial research, they thought she was not large enough to handle the job as a result of the, the image that was portrayed on her online presence. Mm-hmm. So, so she immediately remedied that. And we were all too happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. So um, tell us, Terry, what is the most surprising thing about being an entrepreneur? Surprising? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, the fact that you get to work 80 hours a week and not 40 for someone else. <laughs> you know, it's fun. the surprising thing that I find is a lot of people think, oh, when you own your own business, you have all this money. And, you know, sometimes that's not always the case. So that's a little surprising, you know, because the perception is you always have this unlimited resources of income. But sometimes uh, there are lean times and then there's, there are prosperous times. So sometimes uh, that was surprising to me. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think what else would surprise me about this business. This business is definitely something that you always have to stay on top of and can't let yourself get stale. That's, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know any other thing that would surprise me on top of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, and what has been the most rewarding thing about being an entrepreneur? Um, When I look back, I like seeing that we were able to actually help a business do something or accomplish something, be it get a larger contract, update their image. And I also like, um, like right now I have um, two college graduates that are working at my place now full time. And I love being able to give them the chance to uh, spread their wings and learn what they learned in school and to use that to our advantage here and learn some of the new things. Um, It's nice to have fresh new minds and it also gives them a leg up on their career. So I think that's, that to me is kind of probably the most rewarding thing is mm-hmm. doing that. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's actually a really great marketing strategy, right? To, to go to your local college or university and um, offer uh, an internship, right? Oh. So you as an, as a, as an entrepreneur, need some kind of assistance and you're you're not at a point yet where you can pay you know a real big salary um to someone to help you and going to your your local college or university um and their career center and you know depending on the type of business you have you can either go to directly to that department or the career center and say i would like to offer an internship um in exchange for um, X, Y, Z, right? So right. at the end of, of the internship, the, the student could have a portfolio. They would have some, some, uh, something they could show that could land them a job later on. Right. And so you benefit as, a, as an employer and they benefit. Um, and other benefits that, that you get as an employer is, you know, fresh new ideas, right? Right, right. Um, exactly. New ways of thinking of things. Um, maybe some, some new tools and techniques that, that you would not have thought of yourself. So that, that is um, a really great way to, to save money, make an impact, and to, uh, to, to really give back, right? right? Because as an entrepreneur, you're giving them a, a, a really golden opportunity. Right, right. Well, one of, uh, one of ours was an intern, employees was an intern for us last year here. 
and she had her last year of college to finish. So she did such a good job. She continued to work remotely for us um, until she graduated and now is here with us full time. Um, the one thing that I do do with the interns is I do pay my interns simply because I feel like if I'm taking their work and I'm able to sell it and make money off of it, that they mm -hmm. should get something too. So I do compensate my interns. I know not everyone does do that. And some people really do need the experience. And I think that's valuable too, but I don't know, just something about me. I just feel like if, if I'm going to be able to use their work um, and generate revenue from it, that they should get something too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Great, great. All right. So what, what would you say to, to women executives who are thinking of moving from employee to entrepreneur? Um, I guess maybe one of the things that I wish I would have done <laughs> would be start out with like a nice little business plan or a strategy of where you're going to go. Um, mm -hmm. I think I was raised in an environment where we did not do a lot of planning you know, and I've learned from that, um, while I might be a creative thinker, I'm not necessarily a linear thinker. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had a little bit more of a strategy early on. I think I would have benefited from that more now had I done that early on. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely, you know, maybe glean some information from someone else who's done that with you or, you know, get someone as a mentor to help you. Mm -hmm. And that's something I would definitely recommend. Mm -hmm. before they took that leap and then get involved with an organization like WeBank, you know, um, for sure, because you can get a lot of that information and those tools through the organization. I mean, that alone would be a big, big help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the idea of getting some extra support al along the way, right? I, I like that you said that because that's really, really important. Um, I believe strongly in the mastermind concept, right? That, that, right more minds are, are, are better than one and that we, we learn from, from each other right. um, as we're going on, on, you know, different journeys in life. And so um, a, I, I think it's, it's really key. Your um, experience is uh, typical of a lot of experiences and especially today still, unfortunately, we're, we're still grappling with gender discrimination and pay inequality and that sort of thing. So I'm sure there are people out there who are listening to this and they've seen, you know, younger men, uh, male employees uh, rise up the ranks where they have, have not. They've, they've stayed may, maybe at the same level. Um, and I, I hope that, that this has inspired them to say, you know, look, Terry was able to do this. I can too, right? With some yes. support, with yeah. some help looking back at, and, and at your experience and how you built relationships over the years. And the, the really good news is that women are great at building relationships. We're actually really great at networking. If you know, you're shy and you think I can't do any networking, I don't want to go out there and put myself out there. Well, you know, let me tell you, just shift your thinking from, um, uh, being the one walking in to being the one connecting. And right. you know, we are really great at, at nurturing relationships, at uh, listening to someone and say, oh, you know what, I know someone who does that, or I know someone right. who can help you with that. And if you go in um, as a connector as opposed to the one wanting to, to, to get to know everybody, um, right. I think that's very, very helpful. Um, I and agree. You, you can start your entrepreneurial process while you're still working, right? It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, right. And, and I think that's key too. Uh, yesterday or the other day we heard from, from Blanca Robinson and she started her process almost two years before she opened up her business. Right. Um, okay. She had this kind of vision. Um, and so there, there's so many ways that, that, that we can help that, that, you know, with all the stories and experiences that, that we have, we can help really move that, that, that needle from, you know, employee, uh, waiting for the other shoe to drop to actually being on, an entrepreneur and kind of making your own decision, um, working with something you're really passionate about, um, uh, and helping and giving back. Right. So, right. That's true. That's true. So. <laughs> well, is, is there anything else that you can think of as you're, you're speaking um, 
you know, remember our target is uh, women who are now working for someone else who are maybe thinking that they'd like to be an entrepreneur um, and would, would somehow like some, some assistance and some guidance. Well, maybe if you, um, I, I do th think about this. When I did start um, Double Take and transitioned into Double Take, I did take uh, a night weekend job at a newspaper, you know, putting up, uh, putting together ads, doing that kind of thing. Um, it was, it was kind of funny because I was used to doing very precise, you know, high end stuff. And the newspaper was like, I remember they came to me and said, they started me at the top of the pay scale and said, we need you to do seven ads in an hour, not one ad in seven hours, you know, <laughs> they were like, and, uh, but that allowed me to kind of capitalize the business. So I had to have some kind of cash flow coming in there. So I would do that. And it was like every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of thing, you know, and uh, Friday night was the stuff went to the press and you didn't leave until all those newspapers and all those zones went to the press. So sometimes you'd be there till 2am or whatever. So um, those were like afternoon night jobs that I would do to sort of get this going because I had no capital. So that's another thing uh, that you can always do something else to transition yourself into it instead of just jumping in with both feet and, and then being stressed out because there were times that you get really, really stressed out. Um, but you know, I, I don't know, something, something, uh, right when I'm ready to throw, was ready to throw in the towel. It seemed like the very next day, something good would really come through. So I got to the point where I go, oh, something good's going to come through now that I'm feeling really down at the dumps. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is just persistence and, uh, maybe coming up with something to help, help ease the transition from employee into entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. And there, there are lots of models um, that actually suggest that, that people do exactly what you did, right, is work on something else, bring the capital in so you're not so stressed about the, the capital as you're growing your business. Right. Um, and you can do that as you're still an employee, you know, put a little bit aside um, monthly or, or weekly to, to start to capitalize your business, but also not to be afraid. It's not it doesn't mean that, that, that you failed as an entrepreneur if you have to, to work someplace else while you're, while you're growing your business. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So that's all I can think of at the moment. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Well, Steph, I'm going to ask you to come back in and see if we had any, any questions. Uh, hold on just one second. <laughs> okay. Trying to get the video to turn back on. I, was gonna say, I see yeah, you there. We, we can see you. <laughs> you can? Okay, good. Yeah. I can't see myself. I'm not sure where I hid myself. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we see you. There we go. Um, oh, okay, perfect. There we go now. So uh, thank you guys so much. And actually, um, Terry, I had a, a question. And I hope you don't mind me asking because, again, um, as Nancy said, I'm just six months in and I'm one of those people that got reorged. <laughs> right, right. You know, I was second in command right up next to the CEO and I got, I got reorged. And so, um, you know, one of the things that um, I love what you said about the business plan because Nancy and I have talked about this and, and what was maybe two other things that you look back now that you kind of wished you had done? Like you mentioned, you know, to, you know, stop and do the business plan. And that's something Nancy and I have built into the discussion of, of the Her Dreamers program. But was there like maybe one or two other things that you're like, you know, and if I, if I had my brothers again, I might have stopped and done this. Um, yes, I wish I had paid attention to my financials and my numbers. Um, I, I didn't, you know, like dealing with money. So I kind of put that in the hands of bookkeepers. And that is something that now after getting a very good, reliable bookkeeper CPA, I've realized how important those numbers really are because you really do need to know your numbers to know where you are with your business. And I can't believe it took me this long <laughs> to figure that out. But, you know, to be more cognizant of it and aware of it and not be intimidated by the numbers. I think yeah. in my case, maybe I just didn't really want to know because I didn't want to hear bad news, you know, because then if I had bad news, then I couldn't be up for a sales call. But the bottom line is you really do need to know that and have a reality check with that. So I think that's really important, too, in addition to having a roadmap of where you're going to take your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And it's, it's, it's actually it's, it's wonderful because I and I will say this to anybody who listens um, ask another entrepreneur 
I was to what Nancy said, I was so blessed because I had her, I had surrounded myself with entrepreneurs. And so I asked, so to your point, I wrote the business plan. I went and got an account. I even went and talked to a attorney about, you know, how I should, you know, should I trademark things and all that. So I think that's why it's so important to talk to people that have done this because, um, they're, you know, those just have really helped me. And to your point, having the accountant sit down and my financial planner sit down and like what Nancy said, this is what you've got to spend. This is how long it's going to last you. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. With, until you need to get the, the newspaper job. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, and so w w one of the things I, I want to um, emphasize is sometimes you can't, you know, right off the bat afford the, the accountant or, or the, the CPA. There are tons and tons of resources and guides and spreadsheets out there that we can show you where you can kind of do it yourself while you're growing. Um, the key is you have to know how much cash you have in the bank. You have to know what your expenses are and what you need to bring in to meet those expenses, right? So very early on, you're going to need to know something called your run rate, right? Which is what it costs for you to run your business. Yeah. And um, as you grow your business, then you can really bring in um, the accountants and the financial planners that are going to help you to guide you to get your business from where it is to where you want it to go. But please don't let anybody think that, you know, right off the bat as a new entrepreneur, you have to have, you know, all these expenses of, of an accountant and all that. You, you can take some time to bring that talent on. Um, if you just apply, I mean, QuickBooks is, is, a, is a really, really good, good tool, right? right it is. Yes, it is. There are all sorts of, of uh, spreadsheets, and we can do key performance indicators. I mean, it's, it's um, I always like to say it's not rocket science. If you have a passion for something and you have a talent for something, we can work around where you need some help. Yeah. And, you know, we are really blessed to live in a time when Google tells you everything right, so right. we you right. can count on google you can count on on support groups and with uh you know technology again virtually i mean i'm working with with someone who's in poland and you know we, we've got a six hour difference but once we work that out i can call her at 11 a.m and you know it's still a good time for her you know, the sky's the limit as to the type of business you can set up and, and how you can actually grow your business. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I, to your point, Nancy, like I actually, you know, went and used connections, right? So like you said, I didn't just go right out and, and buy, I literally just asked some people. And, you know, so I was, like you said, I actually just talked to people and said, hey, do you, you know, who do you use? And then I found that so often, especially to what you were saying, Terry, when you get involved in another, a women's organization and they're going to be willing to help you with those first stages, right? Everybody wow. kind of gets uh, rallies around the new little entrepreneur. Like I laughed about how many of you guys have you know, ra literally rallied around me and said, we're going to help you get set up and, and not cost you a lot of money. So like you said, Nancy, I think that that power and, and Terry, you mentioned it too, of of getting involved in an organization and, and picking something and maybe that's your investment because you know two or three hundred dollars to help you save some of that other right right can be that's so true. amazing um and uh so i'm just checking um i haven't had any other questions come in but um again i just you know want to thank you both for everything terry i think to what nancy said one of the biggest things that is so critical is the fact that as people are sitting watching these, that they see that the path to get there could be very different, right? I mean, right. Blanca's was one, yours was another, mine was another. There's so many different ways, but I love the biggest thing you said about, you know, getting yourself surrounded by the right people. And, you know, Nancy, you know, your whole mantra with the program is a bridge, right? We're trying to help people not be afraid of the ravine. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that could be down there. That literally, we want to help you build your bridge and take those steps. Um, and some of them might be like me and, and and ready to start tomorrow, but others may take a little longer. 
And, um, you know, that's okay. And I think that that's what's just so great about, you know, hearing your story and, um, you know, just thank you so much for sharing everything you did today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we really Happy appreciate here. it. Oh, so, thank you. <laughs> and so I hope, you know, again, just if I can take just a few minutes and talk a little bit more about what um, her company, what Nancy has been building here and why we're having these conversations is literally, um, like I said, this has been a passion of Nancy's, I know for quite some time because I was very fortunate. I worked with executive women and we got discussing and she'd already started noticing that with our economy and things that are happening, I mean, you just have to face facts, right? You're either hitting that point where retirement may be ahead of you and what do I do next? Or you could be in a position where you know your company might be downsizing soon. And sometimes, you know, like, um, like I did, I, I had a, a three to four month runway. Sometimes you don't know. Right. And so what we're trying to do is just, even if you have a little inkling in your mind of that dream of being an entrepreneur, um, let's start talking about it now. Let's start really looking to see what we can do. We have a 90 day sort of a jump start program that goes into a year long, a nine more months of support. And to Nancy's point, she's there with you along the way. We're going to bring in others like Terry and Blanca um, to offer support as well, just like you heard today. Uh, we're really trying to build a community specifically for women such as yourself that may be thinking, um, you know, I, I did. I kept thinking, no, I, I have to have a job. I have to have the steady income until I found out there was no such thing as steady income coming from my boss who could tomorrow could change your mind and not be my boss. <laughs> so, either way, to what you said, Terry, either way, it, it's a chance. And I'd rather be in control, like you said, of saying I've built a good business and I know it's going to happen versus the control of somebody tomorrow could walk in and say, You've been great. It's been a nice 10 years, but see you later. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think the days of working for a company 35 years are kind of behind all of us now. It's just things are changing. The economy's changed. The way people do business has changed. So, um, yeah, I think you can probably work for yourself a lot longer than someone else, potentially. <laughs> yeah. You might not, you might not fire yourself, right? <laughs> right. There are times I've wanted to fire myself, but yeah, for the most part. <laughs> so again, we just want everybody to stay tuned next week. We're actually going to be doing, um, some more conversations. Um, one more discussion of another entrepreneur and how she got into her business. And then Nancy will be doing a webinar. So stay tuned to the group. Um, those are going to be posted out there today so that you can um, follow that a little bit more about the program. And uh, we're just really excited. And again, even if you just have an inkling, right, Nancy, and you're thinking, the whole point of the program is to help you take the steps in 90 days to decide if this is truly a journey you want to go on. And then we have some um, either continuing in the sort of support group program or some individualized things that you could do. So we are on a mission and Nancy, don't, I, I don't want to take your, your glory here, but I think, you know, we are just literally on a mission to help those of you that have had this dream, but didn't realize you have, like Terry did, you have the knowledge, you have the skills, you have the power in order to build your bridge. And if you need a little push, and a little hand to hold you on the way. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. So Nancy, I don't know if you have any closing thoughts. Yeah, well, I just want to say uh, about the webinar, right, that, that's coming up. Um, I have uh, made a commitment that it's a free webinar, and you're going to get lots of resources on this webinar. And um, Steph, I want you to maybe help me remind me, re remind, um, help rem me remember what the three things that we said you're going to get out of this webinar, right? So I remember that that one is we're going to talk about business models. Right. Um, we're going to talk about how to land your first client because that for a lot of people is really, really scary. Right. So you, you have this notion, I want to set up this business, but how am I actually going to find clients? Right. So we'll talk. I'll give you some some tools and techniques on that. And then um, I'll give you a formula on how to pitch your business. Right. It's a very simple formula that that is guaranteed to work right so you can use this formula that i'm going to give you and explain who you are and what you do and why you do it and that can help you land your clients it can also uh, help you maybe land some investors 
So I, I really hope you'll 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 tu tune in um, to the webinar and and you'll get some some really great tools and, and information. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely not to be missed. And there'll be um, a guidebook so that you can actually write down as you're, you're talking to Nancy. So um, that information is going to be posted in the Her Dreamers group. You can sign up so that we can get you the information um, beforehand. And um, again, just Terry, such a pleasure to see you again. Thank you so much for all of your wealth of, of knowledge and stories today. <laughs> you're welcome. It's great to see you too again. Yes. And uh, Nancy, um, enjoy Miami. It's, it's kind of funny because the three of us are representing practically every corner of Florida. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, got, we got East Coast, West Coast, and South right here. So, and it's all hot. It's all <laughs> yes, hot. it is. <laughs> it is. So everybody take a care, please. Uh, I will be monitoring as will Nancy um, the Facebook posts on this. So if you have any questions, when you get a chance to watch this later on tonight or the next few days, we will monitor it. We're also, we'll um, edit this and post this so it will be available on the website, hercompany.org. And please go out to hercompany.org. There's some more information on the webinar and the program and get on the wait list. And we All just right. thank you so much. And we look forward to having this journey with you. So thank you everybody and uh, get out there and start your dreams and your journey to having your company. I like it. <laughs> Take bye -bye. care. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.